This is Pirate Attack, a short concept that I built over the weekend. I just want to start it now. And what we do is we have our boat in a procedurally generated level. Now, to show you that this is procedurally generated, if I was to die and start the level again, a new map is spawned. In terms of how many different maps this can cause, there is up to 10,000 different maps that I can create because they're all being randomly generated using a seed, and our seed is just being a number from 0 to 10,000. So essentially, I could have this be a million or infinite number of combinations of maps that can be randomly generated for me for each one of these levels. So if you want to have a go playing this, it's available on my itch.io, which will be in the description below. But in this video, I'm actually going to show you how I generated the water and the land all randomly and how you can do the same to create some really random levels for your games so let's get started so first thing i need to do is start a new construct file and we're just going to call it random because we are creating some random levels today we just start with two sprites i'm going to insert an object scroll down sprite and we'll start with our water now we want to resize the canvas and the smaller the canvas the smaller or the greater the detail that you're going to have in your map overall. I think five by five is actually a really, really nice level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that to resize. And once it's resized, I'm just going to zoom in. And I'm just going to fill this whole box with a blue color, which is going to be my C, like so. I'm then going to do the same again, but for land. So I'm just going to duplicate this one, clone, rename it to land. And I'm just going to edit the animation, and this time I'm going to fill it in with a grid. Okay, and we can drag an instance of land onto our screen. And finally, we just need to insert a new object, and this one's going to be advanced random. And this is going to be the backbone of generating our level. Let's move to the event sheet now. So first we can do is add a new event, system, and we're going to do it on the start of layout, because we want this to be generated as soon as the level starts. Now, unlike other games that have received to be generated, they wait to play in the area to load it all up. We're just going to load it up at the same time. So just bear in mind that this might be one of the drawbacks if you're creating a full-fledged game that uses this concept. It can be a bit slow to start up because it's all running at the very start. Right-click, Add, and we're going to add a blank sub-event. And in that sub-event, the first thing we need is a local variable, and this is just going to be called X. Next one we're going to do is we're going to add a repeat. So we're going to add a condition, scroll down to the repeat, and in terms of how many times we're going to repeat, we're going to take the layout width. So we're looping for every time of the layout width, divided by 5, which is the size of our land and our water. If your land and water is a different size, if you're going for greater detail or less detail for faster loading, then you just change this number. Next thing we need to do is we need to do system and we're going to set the value of x to the loop index. This is the current value of this first loop. Okay, really important that we do that. Next, we're going to right click, add another sub event, and this is going to be another repeat. So we're just going to scroll down to repeat. And this one is going to be the layout height. And again, divided by 5. So this means now we can cover every square of our screen. Now what we're going to cover it with, we're going to start with just covering it by water. So we're going to add system, create object. We're going to create water. And we're going to use x for x. And y is going to be set to the second loop index to give us all values. And both of these need to be times by 5. Just so we're not filling in every single pixel, filling in every five pixels, because that's the size of our water. And hit done, and then we can hit play. So all this has done so far is cover of water, which is a really, really great start. Next thing we need to do is we actually need to generate our land now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new event. And what we're going to say is water on created. And then we're going to add a new sub event to this. I'm going to go to system, compare two values, and this is going to take the advanced random. This is why we added it to begin with. And then we want this classic 2D. 
and then the values that we're going to put in is water dot x water dot y and we're going to see if this is less than or equal to and then our second value is how much land do we want to generate we're going to start with 0 0.35 which i think is the value that's best to use for this which is the value i've used in my game but we'll show you what happens if you increase or decrease this value and hit done and on this what we want to do is we want to do water and then we want it to spawn another object which is going to be our land and then we're going to do water dot destroy so this is going to take some random bits of water it's going to destroy them and replace them with land so now if we run it you'll see that we've generated a random map now if i restart this layout it's going to generate the same map again so only if i close it and restart it do we get the exact same layout so i'm going to show you how to fix that first as promised let's see what happens if we increase this value so let's increase it to 70. So now we get a lot more land and a lot less water. And if we decrease it, let's say to 10, then actually we don't get hardly any land, if not any land at all. So find the sweet spot for what you're trying to create. Again, my sweet spot's around 0 0.35. So what we need to do is we need to generate a seed. Now the seed on its own will only generate every time you load the game up but not when you restart the layout. So first thing I'm gonna do is insert a new object and I'm gonna insert a keyboard. This is just so I've got the option to restart the layout. So I'm gonna add an event, keyboard, on key pressed. I'm gonna check if the R key is pressed. If so, I'm gonna do two things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do advanced random. I'm gonna update the seed. Now, this requires a string to be entered, a string being uh, an alphanumerical character, so letters, numbers, and symbols. We can't enter a number. What we can do is we can convert a number to a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to take random, take a random number between 1 and 10,000 or a million, just like so, and then close those both brackets up. This means it's going to generate a new layout every so often or every time we restart based off one of these seeds which gives us 10,000 different possibilities obviously if we up that number we've got more possibilities you'll see this in games like minecraft where it tells you to enter a seed if you enter the same seed as what was generated before then you get the exact same level okay so even though it's random actually there's a bit of logic behind that random so now we're going to go to system and we're going to restart layout and then we load it, and every time we hit R, we get a brand new level generated.